I have a little helper today, apparently. Oh, breath is smelly. Okay. I don't know if this is going to be a series yet, but it might. I have done a lot of master classes and I've taken notes, so it might be a good way to catalog and share some of those takeaways with you. But in any case, let's start today with James Patterson. James Patterson, as you probably know, is a in an incredibly prolific writer and he's probably best known for his thrillers but I was surprised to learn that he's written in a lot of different genres actually and he just puts out work all the time it's pretty impressive so my overall thoughts about the James Patterson masterclass first I love how down-to-earth he is he uses salty language and he's very frank about times that he's pissed off his readers he's very frank about some of his failures and he seems very humble and down to earth so i really like his energy i really like his vibe it really does seem like you're just sitting down to talk to him at a pub or something and sharing a beer while he kind of talks to you about writing so i thought that was really cool I also think that unlike some other classes that I've taken, he offers some really practical tips, which I really appreciated. On the con side, I felt like the editing was a little bit disjointed, and I don't know if that's because James Patterson's class is one of the early master classes that was offered on the platform, and maybe they hadn't quite smoothed out their whole aesthetic yet, but it feels a little at times disjointed, but not in a terribly distracting way and overall i think the class is still pretty well organized there's a logical flow to the class and to the topics and while he covers a lot of writing craft and how he approaches writing craft at the end he also talks about working with a co-writer which i thought was really cool and i appreciated that a lot and he also talks a little bit bit about publishing and the business of publishing and i thought that was cool too so with that said let's get into the top 10 tips that i took away from the james patterson masterclass in writing tip number 10 habit is more important than motivation james patterson is not the only writer to say this a lot of writers say this but i just appreciated that this was a very practical and very doable trip he taught very doable tip. He talks about how you have to carve out some time in your day to write and to make it a habit. And the more that you do that, the easier it becomes just to sit down and write. And it no longer becomes a chore. It no longer becomes something you have to feel motivated to do or in the mood to do. You just do it like brushing your teeth or like exercise, which I have yet to make a habit, but I'm trying. Yeah. So I thought that was really, really good. Tip number nine, and this kind of follows along very well with the make writing into a habit tip, which is find the joy. Sing on your way to work is kind of how he says it, because he talks about how he used to go on these delivery rides with his grandpa, and his grandpa would sing while he made these deliveries. It's about finding a way to make the work joyful. So if you have the habit of writing every day, find a way to enjoy that, to bring the joy to it, to appreciate it, to maybe have gratitude for it. That's my spin on that tip, by the way, not, I don't think he says have gratitude for it, but you know, it, it's a wonderful thing to be able to write. And so the times that you're able to carve that time out for your space, it makes sense to be grateful that you were able to do that and to thank yourself for doing that. So bring the joy, find the joy. Tip number eight. And this is a direct quote. It's my creation. I can do whatever I want. Basically, he says, don't give a shit what anyone else thinks about your work. He talks about how he was told, oh, you can't do that. Or, oh, you can't write in this third person omniscient or first person. And he says, I don't care. This is my work, my book. I'm going to do what I want, what works for me. And I think that's always a really valuable trip. God, why do I keep saying trip instead of tip? Tip number seven, plot is about revealing character. This tip was really interesting because I think Patterson is known as a plot-driven writer. Most, I think, thriller writers probably are perceived that way. 
But at the end of the day, he really talks about how character is the most important thing in his books. And I thought that was really cool. And that the plot really only exists there to reveal the character. And he makes the point that if your readers don't care about your character, then they're not going to care about the plot at all. And I thought that was really useful. Tip number six, leave out the parts that readers are going to skim. He says, if you think it's going to be boring to a reader, why write it? Either find a way to make it exciting or just leave it out. Tip number five on suspense, because of course, as a thriller writer, this is something he talks about and thinks about a lot. On suspense, he says, the more questions that you can deliver for the reader to have in their brains as they're reading, the better. But the thing about these questions is they have to be questions that the reader is desperate to answer. They have to be incredibly compelling questions, the kinds of questions that will keep the reader turning the pages. Tip number four, and this was really a revelation to me when I first took this class like two years ago. He loves outlines, but he doesn't think outlines are dry bullet points. He encourages you to have fun with outlines. He'll put in flavor. He'll put in bits of dialogue. He wants the outline to be so exciting that you can't wait to write the book. And he'll do like nine, 10, 11 drafts of the outline just to kind of get the flow of the story right. And I thought that was really cool because I think for me as a pantser and somebody who doesn't successfully write, write to outlines very well. I think I've always seen outlines as something that reduces the feeling of the story to these logical plot points to the point where it, do, it just doesn't feel like the story to me anymore because I'm a very feeling driven and very image driven writer, I guess. Like I can't start writing unless I have a, an image in my mind or a feeling that I want to convey. And for me, the outline has always competed against that or, or been unsuccessful at capturing that, I suppose. Whereas he says, no, the outline should capture that. It should convey that kind of feeling and that energy. And that was really exciting. And I actually did try to write outlines that way and it was helpful. It actually worked for one of my works in progress. So. That was a really cool tip. Tip number three, the ending does not have to match the outline. He says that when you write the ending for the outline, you typically write an ending that is logical, that's based on the plot progression and what should happen and what makes sense. But when you actually get to writing the draft, he says that he's often driven by emotion and he pays attention to that. So he goes for that emotional impact ending rather than the pure, logical, reasonable, rational ending. And I thought that was really cool too. So feel free to throw out the ending of your outline and write the new one that has the emotional impact. Tip number two, how to get to the ending. I really paid attention to this one because for me, getting to the ending is one of the hardest things in writing. So he suggests that you write down every possible ending that you can think of. Write them all down. Write down even the ridiculous ones. And then you go through that list and pick the most outrageous one that still makes sense in the story. And finally, tip number one. For me, this was the most valuable tip that he shared, and it is this. He says to imagine a reader, a specific reader who is sitting across the table from you and you are telling them your story and you don't want them to get up and leave. So what can you do for that reader to keep them interested? And I love this idea because he refers to it throughout the class as well. He talks about how when you're, for example, deciding endings, you think, well, what's the reader going to be excited by? What does she want to hear about? What is she going to have an emotional reaction for? And I thought that was so great. And I've started doing that. I've started imagining a single reader that I am writing this for, and it really helps make some of my craft decisions and plot decisions concrete because I have someone that I am writing this for and I can imagine what their reaction would be. Okay, that was it. My top 10 tips that I took away from James Patterson's masterclass. 
and I will see you next time, maybe with another masterclass. I don't know. I've watched, let's see, I've watched a bunch of them. I've watched Amy Tan's, which was wonderful, Neil Gaiman's, N.K. Jemison's, Joyce Carol Oates, Aaron Sorkin, who's a screenwriter, but he still talks about story and storytelling. Yeah, so I've seen a bunch of them. I could go back through my notes and see what I took away from them. There's a lot. So maybe let me know in the comments who you would like to hear about next. I will say that one of the most valuable things about Masterclass has been not necessarily the writer's master classes so much, at least not for me personally, but watching other experts in fields that I know nothing about. So if you have any questions about it, please let me know. I'll be happy to answer anything. I will see you next time. Happy writing. Bye.